Hello and God bless you. Well, today we continue with the daily Bible verse. This is our daily bread and water daily video. And as I always say, we always make time to eat, to feed our physical bodies, but we also need to make time to feed our spiritual bodies. And that is by reading the Bible, getting alone with God, spending time with God. When you read the Bible, you can read a physical book of the Bible. You can read a free Bible app. Free, read one of the various websites. It's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. That is the bread of life. And to get along with God, to spend time with Him, to seek His presence, to seek to be filled with the living water, to get seek to be filled with His Spirit, to give you strength to endure whatever you may be facing. We give you an appetizer of this bread of life, a verse of the day, with some discussions and hopes that you'll open your Bible, you'll complete the meal, and you'll feast on this bread of life. That you'll continually, every day, read your Bible. Get along with God, pray to Him. Because as we see all the deception in the world, it's so very important to read the Bible for yourself, to get along with God, to spend time with Him, to have that relationship with Him. That's what our verse is going to kind of be talking about today. Yesterday, we were in John chapter 8, verse four, uh, 12, which said that Jesus was the light of the world. And today, we are kind of continuing with that theme. We're going to be in the book of John, chapter 3. Everyone knows John, chapter 3, because of John 3, 16. We're skipping down to John 3, 19. Which says, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You see, Jesus wasn't sent was sent here to rescue us from our sins. He wasn't sent here to condemn us. He wasn't sent here to punish us. But that doesn't mean that we can't avoid punishment. It's our choice. Jesus showed us the what our bad things, our sins are. Jesus truly is the light of the world. But some people prefer to continue in their sins. That's why it says because their deeds were evil. They don't want to change what they do. So they don't want to know Jesus. They reject him. And others, they accept Jesus. They become Christians because they want to change. They don't want to hide their sins like these people who live in darkness. Instead, they want to obey God and do good things. So they're happy to come to Jesus. Yesterday we talked about how Jesus was a lie of the world. He uses the words, I am. When he says, I am the light of the world. I am is a special name for God. And the light doesn't, isn't just about guiding us in darkness. It's a dark it's a light that makes the darkness disappear. Just like if you flick on a light switch in a dark room, that darkness is going to disappear. That's what Jesus does for us in our spiritual walk. We must continue to follow Jesus at all times. Every day we should obey him and we should learn from him. Here's a recap at the top of your screen. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then you see in the middle there, John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and this is somebody in Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
That's why when you flick on that light switch, the darkness flees because the darkness cannot comprehend the light. And that's what Jesus says when we walk in darkness. It's like we're walking on, you know, I gave the example yesterday that we're walking like the lights go out. And we're stumbling around trying to find a flashlight, trying to find a lighter, trying to find a candle, trying to find matches, trying to find a lantern. Jesus helps us when we're walking in spiritual darkness, when we're fumbling around in the dark trying to find our own way. Because we can't find our own way to heaven. Then John chapter 9 verse 5 says, As long as I am in the world, I am out. I am the light of the world. And just going back to what our text says about how people are going to reject the light. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 2 verse 13 who says who leaves the paths of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. That's what people do who reject Jesus. When you see Jeremiah 9 6 says the inhabitation is in the midst of deceit through deceit they refuse to know me saith the Lord. And then John 7 7 the word cannot hate you but me it hateth because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil that's what this text is saying here the light of the world is the light of heaven Jesus is coming to the world but because people love this world, love their sin, they love the darkness rather than the light. Because you can hide what you're doing in the darkness. You know, in the natural, I mean, you know, when people want to not be seen, they do something in the dark, in the shadows. That's what he's saying. As the light is coming to the world, Jesus is coming to the world. But the men love darkness rather than light. They don't want to repent and turn to the Lord. Of course, the repentance has been misused and abused in the church. And when you hear the word repentance, what comes to your mind? People saying that you got to get your act together. That you better clean up your acts. But that's not what repentance means. You know, because a lot of people think they can't come to Jesus until they overcome something. They think, well, you know, if I'm battling this addiction, I can't come to the Lord's so side but overcome this addiction. Well, I can't come to the Lord's so I overcome I mean, until I'm financially secure in my, you know, providing for my family. But, you know, as I always say, come to God now. Come to God while you got that addiction. Come to God when you're still not financially secure. He will help you. He will help you to overcome those addictions. He will help you to be financially stable for your family. Come to God now, not later, because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know, it's like someone thinking they need to take a shower before they come to God. But when they come to God, He'll give them a bath. He will cleanse them from all unrighteousness. And you know, so what's repentance mean? You know, I always, I always say, you know, I say that all the time. It means to change your mind, to have a change of heart, to do a 180, do a U-turn. You know, you're just changing your mind so that God can change your heart. Because not, God's not going to force himself on you. He's giving you free will. He wants you to choose him. Out of love, not by force. Which is why he lets sin continue to run its course. But you see, 
just like this verse says, and this is so sad. People truly, they don't, they love this world. That's why when you can go and tell somebody about Jesus coming back. And they don't want to hear it. Because they're in love with this world. You can tell them about salvation. About what Jesus did for them on the cross. But they don't want to submit to God. Because they love this world. I mean we even sit in the church. I mean a lot of times. People come to church because it's a social club. And they come to talk about all the stuff that they've done this week. Not in the parking lot. Not in the meeting at McDonald's after church to talk about. No, they're in the house of God talking about things that don't pertain to God. You know, people don't want to submit to Jesus because their deeds are dark. Their deeds are evil. They'd rather live in the light. You see, Jesus came to awaken the earth. But some don't want to be awakened because they love the darkness. So, ask you this question not for a answer to me but an answer to yourself which one are you well I pray this message blessed you God loves you so much you are not alive by accident you were created for a purpose God did not create you just to fill the earth with people just to take up space. And much like any good parent, God only wants the best for you. God has a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. Jesus is coming back soon to set up his earthly kingdom. The requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. But no one is without sin. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all fall short. We all sin. And to sin means to break God's rules in either thought or action. Just like there's laws in the land that if you break a law you can go to jail, God also has laws. We see in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one's perfect, not one of us. We see this in Romans 3.10, As it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. Or you could say no one's perfect, no not one. Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, for there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. We also see in 1 John 1 8 and 1 John 1 10. 1 John 1 8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And 1 John 1 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his wor word is not in us. The punishment for our sin is death. In Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must receive Jesus into our lives as Lord. And believing in what Jesus did is the greatest gift that we will ever receive. It's a free gift of God of eternal life. It's not about works. No one can be saved by their works. You cannot be a good enough person. We see in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And Galatians 2, 16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We'll never live long enough to begin to pay the price for our salvation. You see, sin separates us from God. 
And not only does sin separate us from God, sin creates a valley between God and man. And with each sin, the valley gets deeper and wider. And the only way to atone for that sin is by the shedding of blood. We see that in Hebrews 9.22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. In the Old Testament, they would use the blood of an animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was a temporary bridge to God. Once they sinned again, they'd have to offer another animal. Because once they sinned again, that valley would get deeper and wider, causing that bridge to collapse like a rope bridge. God knew that we could never be good enough. That's why Jesus came to the earth and died for us. Jesus is the only one who truly lived a perfect life and became the substitute for our sins. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. And Jesus left his throne in heaven, became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a prophet. He was flesh and blood and bone. He was fully God and fully man. And he lived a perfect, sinless life. Jesus came to the earth just to die for all of us. Jesus was crucified on a cross, and he died and was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights. And then he rose from the dead, proving that he was God, because death in the grave had no power over him. Jesus took our place, suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we deserve for our sins was poured out on Jesus. God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus paid God's price for our sin when he died on the cross, and Jesus nailed our sins on the cross with him. It's like our sins were written on a piece of paper, and they were nailed to that cross. And Jesus shed his precious blood for our sins, and Jesus' blood covered those sins, covered those paper with our sins written on it, and washed them white as snow, clean paper now, so that we don't have to die. Jesus was sinless. He was innocent of death. And like any innocent man wrongfully arrested, Jesus died for us. Because of our sin, we are guilty. We deserve God's wrath. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus loved us enough to die for us. Jesus is the only way to the Father. We see that in John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Because Jesus was perfect and never sinned, he is the only one worthy to pay the price for our sins. Just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect, no spot, no blemish, no defect, Jesus was a perfect sacrifice, and his sacrifice was permanent. It paid for the people who believed in him in his day, all the way up to today, and all the way to the end of the world. Our debt has been paid. We're free to go. Jesus paid our debt in full when Jesus died on the cross. He purchased us, redeemed us, bought us back to him, purchased us with his blood, freed us from the bonds of slavery, of sin, with his blood shed on the cross. Jesus paid for our sins long before we ever committed them. We see that in Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So long before you were ever born, Jesus paid the price for your sin in full. So don't wait till you overcome an addiction or until you're financially secure. Go to God now. He will help you through anything and everything that you're going through. The gospel can be summed up in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. You see, so he's not condemning you because you are still in your sin because you are battling addiction because of this or that. Go Come to God now. He's not going to condemn you. He knew that you were a sinner before he went to that cross. He knew what you would do. And then Jesus sent us it up to heaven. We're much like a courtroom. God the Father is the judge. Jesus, the Son of God, is our defense attorney. We see this in Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, that man, Christ Jesus. And Satan is the prosecutor. We see this in Revelation 12, 10. It says there at the bottom, you see, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and he accuses us day and night. So Satan, the prosecutor, he tells God all the sins that we do. But Jesus, our defense attorney, speaks up and he says that our sins are stricken from the record, 
Our sins are forgiven. Jesus paid our sins with his blood on the cross. Your salvation is a free gift from God. So receive this free gift that Jesus gave you long before you were ever born. Jesus wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first individually receive him. You see on the screen Romans 10.13 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Romans 10, 9 and 10 If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Just as works don't get you into heaven, neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have Jesus in your heart. There's a big difference between knowing Jesus intellectually and having a relationship with Jesus. When you believe with Jesus in your heart, you talk to him in prayer. You read his word, the Bible. You put Jesus first, before your family, before your job, your money, whatever it may be. We're all running out of time. Jesus is really coming back soon. So repent, come back to God while you still can. Repent means to turn away, to change your mind, to do a 180, to make a U-turn, to change your behavior. Just like if someone wronged you and then they say they're sorry but they continue to wrong you, if they don't change their behavior, you're going to get tired of hearing them saying they're sorry. So change your behavior. It's that simple. In fact, it's ABC simple. A is for admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit that you can't do this on your own. Admit you need Jesus. B is for believe. Believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Jesus from the dead. Believe Jesus paid the price for your sins. Believe that Jesus did it all for you. C is for call or confess. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Con confess and repent of your sins. Here's a simple prayer on the screen. Just talk to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. And since God is everywhere, you can speak aloud or you can pray to Him in your head and He will hear you. On the screen is a simple prayer you can say or you can use your own words. Just as long as the words are from your heart and you really mean the words, then you will be saved. We are saved through faith in Jesus. It is a 100% free gift from God. So don't think that you got to be good enough to somehow earn it because you can't. So repent, believe in Jesus, then you will be saved. You must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Go to God first, not last. Wherever you are, God is with you. And when you accept Jesus' free gift, and invite Jesus into your life, then God gives you a new heart, and God begins to mold you into who he created you to be. And God is continually molding us, because even though we are saved, we will still sin, because we are unfinished. God is still working on us. So read the Bible for yourself. With all the deception that is in this world, the Bible is the only truth in this world. You need to know what the Bible says for yourself. Jesus is coming. We can see the signs that Jesus talked about happening everywhere worldwide. So don't wait, don't put Jesus off. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. Jesus already paid the price. It is a free ticket waiting for you to enter heaven. And you have the opportunity today to turn to Jesus before it is too late. You do not have time to wait. Tomorrow just might be one day too late. Well, I love you. Jesus loves you. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Or maybe we will see you in the cloud.